You know, at Mizuno, we're all, we've always been known for having great looking golf clubs. So that's something we're very cautious about always. So rather than start with a really oversized golf club and try to make it look okay, just to dial in mass properties, we actually start with the look of a golf club and try to build as much forgiveness in as possible. And that's what we did with the 825. This golf club has all the forgiveness in the world, much more forgiving than a lot of our competition. And at the same time, you look down at it and it doesn't have a ton of offset. It doesn't have a super thick top line. It doesn't have a huge heel. It doesn't even, it doesn't sit hooked at a dress, which we've seen in some irons in the market. So that's something we're really proud to be able to accomplish. And when you look at the sole of the 825, it is a rather wide sole for Mizuno. In terms of the the, the iron feel, this, it's not as wide as a lot of our competition. But at the same time, we kept it somewhat wide just for the benefit of deep center of gravity but we didn't but we didn't want to have it play overly wide so we wanted to be able to learn how to do stuff when you go through the ball you should be able to keep your hands forward have the club enter and exit the turf well so we went back and actually beveled off put what we call a triple grind sole on it where we beveled off the leading edge so it's more, a little bit more blunted it's going to go into the turf as it should then we beveled off the trailing edge so it'll exit cleanly the thing that really stands out about the 825 is the high cor pocket cavity what that is, is it's, it's actually the way we cast this golf club isn't just a normal casting. We cast it and then we go back and put a heat treatment on it that allows it to act that much firmer. So we're able to thin out the sole area as well as the face to get really high ball speeds off the face so it flies exceptionally long. Yeah, right now I've got an MP64 4 iron and then we're going to pair this with a JPX 4 iron. That was a really good strike on that MP. So I'm going to hit a JPX right now and compare those. That was struck well too. And you can see it just seems to fire off the face a lot more. It launches about the same in terms of height, but it really just took off quickly. You could tell it looked like it went a little bit further. So if I were to come over to the TrackMan, compare these two, the, uh, the 64 with the with the 825, I actually hit it 13 yards longer with the 825, even though they were very similar strikes. The ball speed difference was 122 versus 128, so I gained six miles an hour of ball speed just by switching clubs. It's a little bit stronger loft, about one, one to two degrees, but that's not going to give you six miles an hour. There's a COR benefit there too. And that being said, even though it's stronger, launch angle was the same and spin rate was very similar, which shows that you're getting good four iron launch characteristics even though it's stronger lofted and higher cor yeah the jpx is a little bit more stronger lofted than the mp but that's because all the, all the center of gravity is so far back that it launches really high if you were to put the same mp loft on this type of head design it would go really high for a four iron almost too high so that's kind of the reason that we're playing the loft game a little bit just because we're trying to get a proper four iron trajectory the thing about the, the super game improvements or the really forgiving golf clubs on the market is most, most companies put loads of offset on them so, and really thick top lines, really thick soles. When you look down at this, it still is proportioned like a player's club. It's slightly larger, slightly blown up for forgiveness, but offset really doesn't do anything for forgiveness. If anything, it's nothing but a polarizing thing. So we didn't put a ton of offset in this, and we actually flowed the offset a good amount from the long irons to the scoring irons. So on the four iron where the offset does help launch the ball a little bit, it has offset there. When you get into the scoring irons, it's not overly offset. Well, what's great about the 825 in terms of everything that we accomplished, all of our design goals were more forgiving, better ball speed, better looking, better sound. So those were really our four keys and we accomplished all of those. And a lot of the sound and the look we're able to do with one thing. If you look at the top line of the 8, 825 versus the 800, we actually, it's a thicker top line from the back view. But what's funny is we actually went out and beveled it off. So that thicker top line was able to let us control the vibration. It's, it's what we call our, our harmonic impact technology, really to dial in that feel. So we were able to, to make it feel better by thickening that area, but we went back at the same time at address and beveled it off. So it, at address, it still looks very good, looks very clean. There's always been a trade-off in the past of forgiveness versus the look of a golf club. And better players have always almost shied away from a forgiving golf club just because that forgiveness has typically come with loads of offset, thick top line, thick sole, maybe somewhat of a hooked face. 
that's where kind of new irons, we're, especially at Mizuno, we're starting to design really forgiving golf clubs that still benefit the better players in terms of the look at address. My name's Chris Fochel, and I'm part of Mizuno's golf club engineering team.